All right. So, um, uh, hello, uh, Dr. Beck, um, a question about nerve tests. Um, people keep asking, um, you know, most of us who have not gone to medical school um, and hopefully haven't gone through uh, millions of doctors for years and years uh, uh, having things explained, we don't really know what a nerve test does. Um, how long does it take? Is it an outpatient thing? Is it something you go in for a minute, an hour? Is it, uh, is it a painful thing? Uh, is it, uh, it, tell us about it. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about nerve testing because it's not real common. And so when you don't know about something, a lot of people are afraid of it. So I want to answer some of those questions and hopefully uh, kind of get people a little bit more at ease when they come in for the nerve test. You know, typically the nerve test takes about 45 minutes to an hour. And really we do two things. I'll sit down and talk to you and take a good history and physical examination just to see what's going on. And then I'll perform a physical examination where we'll check your nerves and your muscles and this won't involve any kind of needles or uh, invasive procedures. This is where your doctor taps on your knee and checks your sensation with a little pinwheel or a little, a little needle. And then we'll do the nerve testing. Uh, the nerve testing has two components to it, or two parts. Uh, one part is where we do use a little needle. It's a real small pin. And where we check the electrical activities on the muscles in your arms and legs. Now, this is where people get really nervous. You know, they're afraid, wow, that's going to really hurt. And what I do is I use a numbing spray before I use the needle, and this is what we use to kind of numb the skin, so that most people only really feel a kind of pressure sensation when I do the needle test. And they usually tell me, gosh, that's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. And so most people have very little discomfort with the procedure. Now, the other part of the nerve testing is where we stick these little electrical stickies on your hands and feet. And this looks just like an EKG tab. And we hook little wires to the stickies, and this is all on the surface of the skin. And then we stimulate the nerves with electrical stimulator. Now, this, again, is not uncomfortable, but it uh, may surprise you because it's like getting a little stimulation or electrical stimulation, which gives you a little bit of a jolt. And, again, most people tell me after the test, but, gosh, that really wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be or nearly as bad as my friends told me it was going to be. So most people have no problem with the testing. Now, once we get the results, we can find out if you do have nerve damage and if you need uh, some type of treatment to prevent further nerve damage. For example, if you do have carpal tunnel syndrome, and this is a condition where you get numbness in your first, second, and third fingers, tingling, some weakness in the hand, you know, if that's uh, really bad, then we can get you on to see a, a surgeon about getting this released, and so you won't lose the use of your hand uh, from the permanent nerve damage. Well, all right, so that kind of explains it a little bit of... Um what it is. So it's, it's, you come in, it takes about an hour, and you walk out. You, there's no, uh, no pain involved, even though, yes, there is a little bit of a needle sticking, but uh, it's, it's a very thin needle, and on top of it, uh, it gets pre -numbed. A little bit like when we go to a dentist, right? He pre -numbs us so that the actual sticking of the needle when we get the injection really doesn't hurt so much anymore, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, you know, wonderful. And so then you go and clip on some electrical things, and that basically shows us uh, or shows you uh, whether the nerve is damaged or not. Now, is it possible that a person has, let's say, carbon bundle or some such stuff, and um, numbness in the legs, in the toes, and he does not have a nerve damage, and thus actually um, the nerve is not damaged yet, and the correcting of the carbon bundle is a lot easier than if it would be damaged already. Oh, exactly. Uh, for example, if somebody has very mild carpal tunnel, and we pick that up at least the beginnings of it with our testing, then the treatment may be very simple. It may be something like taking a, a Motrin or doing a little stretching exercise or just using a splint, which is a big difference from going in for uh, surgery where they have to actually put you to sleep and open the hand up to fix the nerve. I see. So wh wh what, what is the danger of, let's just say I'm having carbon bundle because I'm working on the computer all day long or I'm having mm -hmm. um, an, an elbow thing, a tennis elbow or whatever you call that stuff, right? And uh -huh. it's pain. And I go, well, it's normal. That's what I do. Everybody has it. Uh, um, and um, like with gum disease, oh, everybody bleeds a little bit, and you just keep going at it, uh, kind of like. In, so w w what, um, what can happen if a person doesn't get tested and keeps, you know, having a, a make-break point, let's just say, 
where all of a sudden the, the, the nerve does get damaged and it gets, so to say, treated wrongly. He tries to treat it with creams and he does whatever he does and takes maybe even some painkillers or aspirin. I don't know what people do for those things. Um, so basically he, he applies the wrong treatment too long and the, and the center of it, the nerve, is keeping getting damaged. Um, what's going to happen? Well, it can be really bad. Uh, for example, I saw a fellow in here just the other day who uh, worked in a factory where he used his hands on a regular basis, and he'd been having problems for several years and decided to not to uh, go and see a doctor about it. He wanted to kind of put it off. Uh, again, use things like you said, creams or Votrin, and, you know, just simple things, and hopefully not have any more problems. Now, by the time he got to come to see me, the thumb muscles were uh, wasting away, they had irreparable nerve damage to them. And even if he does have successful carpal tunnel syndrome or surgery for the syndrome, uh, it's very unlikely that he's ever going to get the strength back in his hand. So he's always going to be weak in that hand and have difficulty using it. And that's not a really good thing for somebody that has to use their hands on a daily basis. No, it is not. And if a person comes in and gets the nerve tested early enough, we say, okay, the nerve is okay still or is only slightly damaged, because of knowing that, what you're saying is that major damage, such as not being able to use your, the hand, I've read somewhere in your article that your hands become crippled, they look like an ape or, or something like that, and um, it, that that can be avoided. Is, that's what you're saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, if we catch it early, there's lots of things we can do, uh, even without surgery, to help prevent major problems. Well, Dr. Peck, I appreciate you uh, telling us about that. I'm sure I'm going to speak to you more. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye -bye. thank you. Mm -hmm.